The million dollar question, how do entrepreneurs transition from self-employed to owning a business that turns a profit? My name is Chris Waters and this podcast has the million dollar answer. Welcome to CEO Secrets. Hey guys, it's your host, Chris Waters of CEO Secrets. I've got a really amazing guest on today. She is a powerhouse real estate agent, real estate team leader. And uh, she also recently launched her own online uh, coaching platform where she's helping uh, real estate agents scale and grow their business. And something else pretty amazing about her business, her real estate business, is that um, 80% of her business comes from her database and from agent referrals. Uh, let's welcome Jenny to the show. How are you doing today, Jenny? Hello. Thanks for having me, Chris. I'm so excited to see you and hang out. Hey, I have a quick question. So I, we've met before and I, your last name, is it Wolick? Wolick? I've never wanted to ask you this. And so why not now? Okay, great. It's Jenny Wallach. Wallach. Okay, yeah. got it. All right. it. It's fine. However you want to say it. Yeah. Okay, great. I didn't want to butcher it, so thank you. Yeah. For everybody watching this, uh, could you share with them kind of your, you know, your background, how you got into real estate, and uh, and then we'll kind of dive into the weeds, talk more about your business. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I'm Jenny Wallach. I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma. That is where I work, where I have a real estate team and business here in T-Town, middle of America. And um, I have been in real estate for 20 years, and I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot, I've failed a lot, and uh, just getting better and better every day, like fine wine, that's what I like to say. I love it. Yeah, so I've really, over time, gotten to realize what I love most about this business. First off, what I love most is that you can be from any background, any behavioral style, and you can still rock real estate. You just get to find what piece of it that you love. And that's where I've grown, is now I have a team where they're in the transaction, helping the buyers and sellers, and now I get to do what's in my heart and what's my passion and my purpose. And that is to teach and train and empower real estate agents. So they don't take all the time that I took figuring all this out. So yeah. that's what I do now. <laughs> that's awesome. So before you, you know, kind of built your own platform, you were a KW um, maps coach, right? No, I've never been a, a coach. You were, in, were you in maps coaching maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've had a coach. I've had a business coach, whatever organization you're with. I think it's so important to have accountability yeah. in your life. And that's been super important to me. I've had a coach for like 10 or 11 years now. Yeah. I, I know you may have told me this a couple of years ago. Do you have kids? Are I you, do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How many kiddos do you have? Yeah. So my daughter is has just finished up eighth grade she is will be cool. a high schooler next year and she is almost 14 and it's freaking me out and she's as tall as me right now as tall wow. as me. she's gonna pass me is it one girl yeah just cool. one yeah yeah i have i have two girls so i'm on the i'm a girl dad it's so fun it's so fun cool so what's your what's your team look like in tulsa how many team members do you have like what's your org structure look like yeah, what's crazy, Chris, is last year through a pandemic, we actually almost doubled in size as far as team. Wow. So we were able to, even though we were operating from our home offices, we were, you know, out in the field safely. And then I got to take a lot of people through what we call, you know, career visioning is what we call it. It's just a, a recruiting process and a hiring process. So I took everybody through that process through Zoom. And um, so now we are, I've got three lead agents, I would say they're doing the bulk of the production. My agents get to do both. They get to work with when they earn the right to, they get to work with both buyers and sellers. And then I've got three newer agents. So brand new, just started in the last year. So what a, what a market to get in. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's interesting. Pro I mean, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but I think, you know, an extreme seller's market and an extreme buyer's market are both kind of one and the same because you're just trading, you know, one challenge for another. I mean, it's, it is actually, it is kind of tough right now uh, to be an agent. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I totally agree. And this is where like whatever rules and standards we had set for the team and for team members in the, you know, a year ago, you know, we set pretty high bar and expectations and it's a challenge for these brand new buyer agents out in the field battling it out, as you know. So I'm yeah. sure you're witnessing that with your own agents as well. Yeah. So we have to have a great value proposition as a team 
so that they see the benefit of being with us. They're learning and growing maybe faster. They're getting to hear every morning with our huddles and our gratitude that we share every morning as a team. They're getting to learn faster because they're with us and they get yeah. to our experience to help them out. That's awesome. So three lead agents, three agents in training. And then what about on the back end side? How, who's yeah. supporting those people? You know, we've had a lot of turnover and change in this area over the years. And now we, I feel really good. Finally, we've got a great director of operations. She's been with me five years. And we just realized that rather than have, bring on a whole nother person to help in that arena of the transaction management, we just hired a virtual assistant who is totally able to leverage her. And then she can focus on more of the client care and the, you know, hands-on stuff with the, with the customers. And then we have a brand new marketing girl that's already crushing it. So it's very exciting to feel just for a minute, all is, all people are in the right seats on the bus. Nice. For who, now. Do, who did the lead agents report to? Is that you? Yeah, they, they got yeah. me. Okay. They, you're, so your director of operations, she's actively talking to clients and then the VA is doing all the back end, like data entry, you know, repetitive type work. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, the, the virtual assistant, as you know, they're sitting focused, no distractions, no agents coming in, bugging them. So she is so efficient and effective in leveraging our, our lead, you know, director of operations. So it's been a great fit so far. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. That's really good. So you, you said you double the team size. What do you guys plan on doing from a production perspective this yeah. year? And what did you do last year? Yeah, last year we helped 174 families here in Tulsa. Wow. And, um, which That's is a great. lot for three, three lead agents. And, and Yeah. No, but back then I w it was two lead agents and I did like two transactions last year. Wow. So they so crushed two it. agents crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Sure. Yeah. So you can imagine whenever you are a relationship based business with, um, you know, a small and mighty team as the leader, it's my job to enhance this relationship, make them feel really engaged and, and empowered that they can still sell lots of houses, but still have a life. Yeah. Maybe you found that as being the leader of lots of people. I mean, we can envision a, an amazing life for ourselves. And then we got to create a world that people want to have that as well. And how can we help them achieve it? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Cool. So this year's goal, this year's goal is uh, 221 families. So where that number came from was we took a look at our current database of how many, you know, met people are in there. And then the agents, you know, committed to, what their goals were and their standards for this year's production. So it's been cool. That's amazing. Yeah. So talk to me about, I mean, that's a lot of deals to be 80% referral and database driven. Um, what I could share some of the secrets. Well, first off, you have to have a database. You have to know what it, what one is, whatever CRM or tool you use, you have to have something that puts all your people uh, that you've met or you haven't met into a system where you have follow-ups and reminders. So that the first thing when people are saying like, how do I have this kind of business? Well, first off, you got to identify and know who they are. You want to have all their contact information. Um, that's first and foremost, you got to have a database, you got to have a system, and then you have to have a plan around making contacts to them and a touch system. That's just an overarching theme. And then of course we've run all kinds of fun, new like events and giveaways over the last year with the pandemic that we got to really realize that for very low cost, have fun, touch our database, get engagement, whether they call us on a certain day or we, they opt in, they fill out a form and then we call them on a different day. So I think if you like really took a microscope to our business here, you would see that we really have att attempt to have fun in everything we do. And for some reason, people are attracted to that. And that that's when they share their friends with us and their colleagues, and it just becomes this ripple effect. And at the end of the day, you have to deliver an amazing client experience. Yeah. So all of those have systems and checklists as well. So when you do marketing, is the marketing coming from you or the team to all the customers? And then when somebody inquires, that's when you send one of your lead agents out. 
Yeah, I mean, I have my team name as The Wallet Group, and it was created that way to not be so about Jenny, so that it could be a little bit more um, inclusive rather than just my name and my face on everything. So it is, I am always using language in all of our marking about we, us, our, and that's who we are as a culture. Now, when it does, you know, a leader referral comes in, maybe it comes to me personally. I, I really trust my agents. As you can tell, they do a lot of business more than I've done in the past few years, actually. And so I trust them to be better at it. So I very easily pass them right off to our clients and they have no qualms about it. All that people care about is achieving their goals. Yeah, and that's yeah. buying or selling a house and having good service along the way. So what are some of those, what are some of those things you're doing throughout the course of the year to maintain top of mind awareness? Well, I use a company called viral marketing and I send out two video emails. Now all of the video emails are coming from me. It is Jenny, you know, telling the story about what's happening in the market, things going on in the community, uh, local restaurants. I found that, Chris, honestly, people don't really care that much about real estate. Well, right now it's pretty important because everybody's consumed by it with the current market. Yeah. However, the most viewed videos that I've ever had are usually relating to things that people care about, like food, <laughs> what's going on in town, you know, that kind of stuff. So, if, you know, on our YouTube channel, we have lots of different playlists that really cater to you know, whether it's supporting local businesses, I love doing that. Over the pandemic, I interviewed like at least 50 different local businesses through Zoom and just promoted them, you know, to get the word out of how they have pivoted, how they need help or yeah. you know, just promoting their businesses. And we really believe that like the more we give, the more we get. That's kind of like, I mean, that's kind of like prospecting, doing a Zoom interview with a business owner because... They're talking about their business. You're establishing a relationship. They meet a lot of people, which is going to refer you out of business. I'm kind of wondering what percentage of your gross revenue do you spend on advertising? It's got to uh, be low. Very low. On advertising? Yeah. Very low. Like our marketing budget is basically wrapped into our lead gen because it's going to our met database. So like anything outside of that, it's very low. I don't have a great number for you, but yeah, it's in alignment with where I should be. It's what my coach tells me. That's amazing. So what, um, what was the light bulb moment to make you, you know, be, you know, in this headspace where you're like, I want to go train other people and teach them how to, you know, follow my footsteps. So what was that light bulb moment that caused you to want to do that? And um, what's the name of the website again, where people can go to check this, check it out? Yeah, well, I'll kind of include it in the story. Yeah. I Years ago, I like you, you start having success and you're a solo agent. You're like, oh, this is fun. Oh, no, now I'm stressed. Now I can't handle all this business. Now I'm losing business and I'm losing my mind. So that was a part of when I started growing a team. And then I started failing all over that. And I, I say that affectionately for the term because we know that when we fail, we're learning, we're growing and we're getting better. And so... I was at a, a mastermind is what we call it, just where we would get together with other top agents from across the country. And I was very, I was at a very low point in my mind because I was worn out. I was stressed. I was maxed out. I was paying people, but I wasn't holding them accountable. So I was pissed, you know, like all these feelings you can be having in the stressed out moments of a growing successful. So on the outside, it looked like I was had it all together you know, growing production and income, but really it was a financial mess because I wasn't running my business like a business. And I had this epiphany um, from some conversations with people about like, I, you know, at this moment of breakdown and I just thought, what do I love in my heart that if money was not an object, if I didn't have to work to earn money, what would I do? And that just, I woke up that next morning and this is a really long story and I share it over and over again when I teach my classes that I have, because it really got me thinking about, wait, 
if I can do what I love, which I realized is I love teaching and training and sharing with agents because it gets me so excited whenever they connect with that and they go, oh, that's all it takes. I think I've learned that I'm pretty good at simplifying it down, like over agents overcomplicate things. And I just put it in a very easy to understand checklist that they go, wow, this is amazing. And then I feel great because I've helped them. And so I started realizing that. And then I thought, how can I do that and still have a real estate business? Well, when I teach and train and share with agents across the country, guess what? They tend to, they tend to think of me when it's time for a referral to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So that's where the income started coming is my team was okay with me going out and meeting agents because they benefited because they got the referrals that, that we would generate. And in 2016, I had gone to family reunion, which is a Keller Williams event. And I came back because all these agents, remember our viral videos that go out two videos a month. Well, agents from across the country started seeing my videos. Maybe their friends were passing them on to each other. And I called up my viral guy and I said, Hey, could I do a blog, a video blog, but just for real estate agents? And so that's where your journey with Jenny.com was launched is because I said, well, let's do it. Not just talking about Tulsa, but talking about all the things we do in our business. So the tips and tricks and systems and tools that we're doing, you know, helping over a hundred families a year, let's just share that with agents. And so that's where it all started. (laughs) Wow. So you would go to Keller Williams market centers across the United States, teach classes, and then those agents, when they had people relocating to Tulsa, obviously were thinking of you. Yeah. That's awesome. What, um, so like out of those 170 deals, do you know roughly how many of them were referrals versus from your database, just out of curiosity? Yeah, agent to agent referrals are, have been for the past few years, at least 30% of our business consistently. So do you buy leads at all? Are you buying leads like on any platforms? No. I mean, I assume you get just the typical listing leads and organic traffic, people calling on the for sale sign, stuff like that. Yeah. And once we got really good, Chris, over the last couple of years of our marketing and our message and using video and all the things we're supposed to be doing consistently, now we're getting the come list me's I found you online, you know, no referral fee attached. And we're like, woohoo, this is what it's all about right here. Yeah. So it's That's important. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. For somebody watching this that's not in real estate, what are you investing in? I mean, the market's at an all-time high. Um, like, where, where are you personally investing money to you know, help build wealth? Well, for me, it's going to be, um, I got to invest in what I know and what I know is real estate. And luckily, when you are a realtor, you have um, people call you that want to sell their house. And so I have one condo that I just closed on and I'm under contract on another one because they called us to sell and the numbers work for us. And so I'm able to get properties before they hit the market. So there's Uh, not the multiple offers. So if you're in real estate, anything that comes your way, look at it first through the lens of, should I buy this? Mm -hmm. Because at least in my situation, I'm able to knock off commission that they were planning on paying. What's your prediction right now? How long do we have at this, you know, these peak prices? Do you see it nose diving or do you see us at a plateau? What's your prediction? I'm telling you, well, first off, I have no idea. And secondly, here in Tulsa, we, we are typically like, you know, you Texas, you're a little different, but in Tulsa, we are always the last to get to any trend. So whether it's the high or the low, and we are seeing even in little Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, 20, 25% increase over just last year. And that's a lot for us. We are typically, you know, four and 5% over year, every year. And so I have been in the business 20 years and never seen this. I have no idea on that answer, but I think it's going to be a little bit of time, at least from maybe it's a seasonal thing. We're getting more listings. We're taking more listings than we did a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe more inventory will be coming on, but I think we got a couple more years. Don't you? Yeah, I guess my I, I think we're gonna hit a plateau soon. Because yeah. I mean it's it's gonna be getting hard for people from an affordability perspective. Right. So I feel like we've got to be getting close to that plateau, you know, when you think about people's debt to income ratios and how much money they're making. So but um yeah, cool. Another so, reason 
Chris. That's another reason, Chris, to be an investor and be a property owner. And then if it's not affordable for them to buy, then you can help them with the renting need. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so what's, um, what are some of the core things you teach? It's, it's a membership site, right? What you set up, it's a membership site. And um, is it kind of like a buffet or is it like kind of a la carte? Yeah, well, it started a couple years ago, and I first created a workshop, and I had the help of Frank Klesitz, our friend. He kind of mapped it out for me because he's got lots of smarts, although, you know, a little out there sometimes. So once I kind of put my brain around what would work for me, I created a workshop. So back then it was three hours. Now I put it to two because three is really long to talk through Zoom. And so it's really just starting with our mindset and our mission this is basically a class for brand new agents or experienced agents. And I have had both take it and both love it. And the reason why is because I talk about it from my perspective and what has worked for me. So the people that typically take my class have a desire to have a relationship and referral based business. Cause I'm not going to teach you how to prospect call for sale by owners. I'm going to teach you how to love on your people that are already in your world. So we're going to talk about listing presentation and buyer presentations and the details that go along with that and having clients for life. So all of your events that you may do with them, um, different ideas and checklists. So I created that one and that's $99 and all kinds of agents have taken it over the years. And that, then I kept hearing from them. They're like, wait, we need more. You've given us all the stuff to do with the details. I give them links to my personal Google Drive. And now they aren't getting into action because they need some accountability. So I created a six-week follow-up class called Implement My Business so that we can go deeper and have more time. And, and I throw in even more stuff when it comes to like team building and P&Ls and details with how to hold your team accountable and things like that. And then just in March of this year, the next, the what's next came again, because the people who kept taking my classes are like, we want more. We want to hang out more. So I came up with maintain your momentum, which is the membership group. And it's $97 a month. And you get to take all the classes I have for free. We get a weekly webinar and a monthly call with me. So it's been so fun so far. Cool. So when you think like in the team model, for example, you know, a lot of times agents, they think the grass may be greener. They want to get better commission splits. What are some of your nuggets from some of the courses you teach around how to create a sense of belonging so people are less likely to leave you because they think the grass is greener? You know, we've all been through this. And I usually find that when people don't work out on my team, it's either because they weren't trained properly or they weren't held accountable or they shouldn't have been a fit for our team anyway. And I know that all three of those reasons are all my fault. So mm -hmm. I've had to continue my growth in leadership and personal development so I can share that with them. So I've really focused on creating a culture where that's who we are. We are a culture of grit. We're a culture of growth mindedness. And we also got to have some grace. And so like, for example, we have a brand new guy. He'd been in real estate, but not an agent before with another company. He came and just joined us. He's in his first 30 days training. He already has a buyer under contract because he has no plan B. He has four kids, newly single dad, and he's got to make it work. And that's the grit that we want to find in people. And that's who we are. Now you can have not have grit. You just might not fit work out for our team because we're a team of production and positivity at the same time. So I think what I'm getting at here is that the culture has to be very clear and easily defined by people looking from the outside in. And if you go to our mission statement on our website, we, we share the promise and our promise is that we're going to deliver an amazing client experience that we're going to keep you updated throughout the transaction. We're going to have fun along the way. And as a team, we commit to giving back to our community and empowering our youth through training and education. Like, it's very clear who we are. So we attract the right kind of people. So as a business owner, whether you're real estate or not, you, the leader, have to have the vision on what is your value. What do you offer and what do you give before you just start winging it and piecemealing it together, you know? 
Yeah, that's good. A little bit of a sidestep. When you think about the industry, it's changed a lot over the last 20 years. A lot of people over the last 20 plus years have always been afraid of real estate agents getting replaced, but we're probably more at a time more so than ever before where there's you know billions of dollars being invested to disrupt the industry. What's What's your prediction look like in terms of like, you know, what, how the agents position when you, you know, you look at companies like Redfin that are letting people look at houses without the agent or make an offer without an agent and open door and Zillow getting into the brokerage business. Like what's your prediction of the role of the agent in the future and, and uh, your prediction around teams? Like, will they still be relevant? Yeah, I I think it's important for us to know what's going on in our industry to be knowledgeable of all of those different disruptors. And I also know in all my years that I need to focus on what I can control. Mm -hmm. And what I can control is how I show up for my team and how we uh, present ourselves in the community. And I believe that, at least for us, that when we are so intertwined with you know, when we sell a house, then we, you know, offer a donation to our client's favorite nonprofit. We have client events and then we always make a donation to a local nonprofit. And I interview the executive director of that nonprofit. And we have a business partner with us that, um, that sponsors the event. So they zero out the cost and I help promote their business. So it's like, it's a relationship. You can't deny a relationship. You can't deny a feeling. So I'm going to be aware of all these things going on, but I'm not going to worry about them. Are you in a market with iBuyers? Have they um, entered Tulsa yet? Not really. Yeah, Mm -hmm. not really. Cool. Um, Well, (laughs) um, (laughs) Jenny, this has been really great. I've been perusing through your website. You are an amazing just communicator, trainer, speaker, um, and you've got a servant's heart and you have some amazing teeth, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> I'm totally jealous. Yeah. So anyways, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, can you remind us what's the domain name again so people can learn more about how to connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. Your journey with Jenny, dot com, And you'll see all kinds of tabs at the top for events. You can find any upcoming things I have going on or learn more or just watch videos and steal all our stuff and ideas and put them in your business and be successful. That will make I'm, me. I, I, I'm going to go check out your team's YouTube video right now. I want to see all these interviews you've done. Yeah. That sounds, called, it sounds amazing. It's called Tulsa Looks Good on You. Tulsa looks good on you in that um, on the playlist. So you'll find it on our YouTube channel. Amazing. Tulsa looks good on you. I'm going to go check it out. Awesome. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the episode today. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button if this is your first time tuning in to CEO Secrets. Hope you took a lot of notes and a lot of little good nuggets from Jenny. And until next time, bye, everybody.